So this is going to be really brief. The, the purpose of it is just to be a really helpful refresher of some of the, the ways to utilize Canvas for distance learning, as well as to answer um, some specific questions. Like I shared in the last one, there were um, a lot of really good questions in the first session, um, which is really helpful for you guys, because now I'm just going to ask myself those same questions and kind of go through that process. Um, so the link is in the chat, and then please, please stop me and interrupt if you have any questions, um, because I can't see you. Just, just talk over me, and then I'll stop. And then I'm monitoring the chat too, so you can put that, put your questions in chat as well. All right. So today we're going to go over um, the following things. We're going to talk about setting up our home pages, which you guys all should have one, but how to kind of customize those, how to add files, images, slides, et cetera, um, how to add people to your page. So whether that's students or co-teachers, we're going to talk about why that's important. Um, we're going to talk about how to create an assignment from scratch. And then um, we're going to talk about comparing pages and modules and how to kind of lay out your course content. Um, we're going to really briefly talk about add-on apps and how to add those. Um, and then I'm going to try to send a video with more detail because we just didn't have time to get into the, the nitty gritty of how to use that. And then um, I have some links to show you guys how to use Google Assignments and things like that. Um, just prepping ahead of time. We probably won't get into every detail of that, but I do have some really detailed videos for you guys that go over exactly how to do that in this presentation. So we'll jump right in. So your home page, um, it's the first thing your kids see. It's really important to get it um, set up and customized so that it's easy for kids to navigate our courses. Um, and so we can customize our pages and we can have it display like whatever we want, link to different pages or modules or that kind of thing. Um, so I've seen them set up really simply, excuse me. Um, I've also seen them have a lot of detail. So it really depends on your kids and their level and, and how, how easily they can navigate um, the internet. So let's jump into it. So to actually set a home page, this goes through the instructions. I'm not going to waste any of our time today going over this because all of you should have a home page already because we made those um, page, those classrooms for you guys. If you don't have a home page for some reason, please send me an email because most likely you're using the wrong course or, the, or there's some kind of error that's happened that we need to get fixed on our end. So please let me know if you don't have that. So I'm going to go into um, a demo course to kind of go over some of these things. And so let's go talk about how to add or change what's on our homepage. All right, so this is just a demo course for this training. So um, right now my homepage, you can see I've got a Google slideshow on it. There's no buttons, there's no count, there's nothing. There's just this Google slideshow. So um, I'm actually even going to delete that and let's just start from scratch. So I have my welcome page, um, you know, you can say welcome to school, you can put your title. So on this page, you've got your rich text editor, which is what you see here where I could, I could type into this, I could change the, the font, I could change the size of the font, all of that. On your HTML editor, you're actually changing the code of the website. Um, so most likely you're not going to be working out of this too often. So I would just stick in the rich text editor. Um, sorry, I'm going to write down a couple people who joined us really quick. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Dupinder. Hey, Julie. All hey. right. Morning. Morning. All right. Apologies. Okay. So let's jump into it. So I want to first add my Google slideshow. So what I would do is I would go to the slideshow. I'm going to add this one just for the purposes of time. Um, when you're in your Google slide that you want to put in your homepage, you're going to go to file. And then you're going to go to publish to the web. And the reason you're doing that is because you want to get what's called this embed code. And so this code right here is what I need to copy and there'll be a publish to the web button here. You need to push that if you've never done that before. Um, but I want to get this embed code because I want to 
literally embed it into the website. Um, so I'm going to copy that. And then right here, you don't want to push this button because you want to make sure your access is not restricted to only PBV USD. Um, so I got my code. I'm going to go back and I'm going to center my cursor and I want to put my slideshow here. So I'm going to go up to this button that says insert edit media. It's the second one over on this, on this toolbar. So I'm going to hit insert edit media. And then you see that embed button, same as we just did in Google. I'm going to paste that code there. And there is my slideshow. There are little tricks to remove these bars and things, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, so I've got my, my Google slide and now let's say I want to add like my buttons. So I want to have it, I want to have my homepage say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's where I'm going to start. So I could insert an image. I could insert like every single one of those. And the way I would do that was go to, um, embed image right here, this fifth button over. And I could either upload a link to it or I could upload a file to my course files. So I would go to upload file. I would find, um, you know, a flyer or a, an image and it uploaded it here. So I could do it that way. And then I could change my dimensions. This just makes it smaller or larger. So I could put it there. So you see, I put it there. I could put a lot of images. If I want to organize it a little better, what I recommend is inserting a table so right here, this table button, you could say the size of the table you want. So I'm going to do five by one. And then you can put your image into each of these boxes. So I'm going to put that image that I uploaded here, that course flyer, and then I'm just going to shrink it down to a 200, meaning it's just going to get really small. And there it is in my box. So for the purposes of time, I'm just going to copy and paste this into every one of these boxes. But you would go through the same process of um, embedding that image into each box. But like I said, I'm just going to copy and paste them. All right, so I've got my five, or so we'll say these are buttons. We're just all going to pretend that that's what's happening. Oh, my God, Joanna, your glasses are hilarious. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that um, these are all buttons. They say, let's say they say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so those look great, but now I've got this ugly black bar around them. So if we hit save, you'll see. They look great, but I've got like this ugly bar and I don't like that. So I'm going to go back to my edit box and then I'm going to click my table. And then you see this uh, menu popped up right here. And then there's a button that says table properties. Um, so I'm going to go to table properties and then this is how I'm going to get rid of this border. So it says border one. That's just the width of that line. I'm just going to make it say zero. And that's going to get rid of it. So now um, I can hit save and all of my buttons are lined up perfectly and I didn't have to, you know, mess with them at all um, or my pictures or whatever, but there's no ugly border. So we've got a slideshow. We've got some buttons. Let's say I want to add a video to this page and this would apply whether I'm doing an assignment or a page or anything. All of these things would apply the same way. So let's say I want to add a YouTube video um, of something. I could add an actual video. Let's say I just want to record myself saying something. Um, you could set this or to start recording. You can see it's picking up my voice. And you could do like a quick daily greeting if you wanted to. You could upload a loom if you've made one. Um, but I'm going to upload a YouTube video. So let me go to YouTube and grab it. And I'm going to grab an embed code from a video. Um, sure, let's do memory tricks. Why not? All right. So when you go to YouTube, there's always a button that says share on the video. You're going to hit share and this embed button right there. So let me do that again. Share. And then you're going to hit embed. And you need to get this embed code. 
And that's what I'm going to take back to Canvas. And then I'm going to do the same process I did with my slideshow, where I'm pushing the insert edit media button. And then I'm just putting that embed code into Canvas. And now I've got my video. And again, you could do the same thing where if you had a table, you could put videos in a table. You could like lay those things out and organize them very neatly. Um, if I have more than one thing, I usually like to do a table because it just drives me crazy if not. Um, so I've got a slideshow, I've got some buttons, and I've got a video. Now the last part of this home page that I probably want to do is I want to link these buttons to like a different module or a page. So um, I'm going to click my first picture or my first button and let's say this is Monday. And I'm going to go over to my right hand side of the page and it says link to other content in the course. So I'm going to go to modules and I'm going to link it to Monday. So now when my kids go in and they see this page, you can see none of these things have links yet, but when they hover over Monday and they click it, it's going to take them straight to their module. So you could get as, as detailed with that as you want. Um, you can do it day by day. I know some teachers have gotten as detailed as doing like every day they go and fix them and make new links sounds like a lot of work but i'm not doing it day to day so i don't know um but um you can link it that way you could put a zoom button if you wanted to put your zoom links for your meetings you could put a button with a zoom picture and um hyper um it, hyperlink your zoom session and you would just do that by um clicking the button, let's say this said zoom, and then you would just um, appear at the top link to URL, and then you would put your zoom link in there. And you see it turned yellow. If you blinks, it linked. And now if they click that, it would take them to zoom. So I know I went over that really, really briefly, but does anybody have any questions about inserting um, images or embedded codes or slideshows or anything like that into these pages? Is there a way that if I just put a Google slide up there and then it has links that it will open the tab and not in a different window, but in the same window? Um, no. So if you put it in a Google slideshow, it's always going to open another window. Um, okay. So if you want it to link to something within your course, I would make a different button for it. Um, okay. and link it that way. Um, but if you want it to link, like these will all work in my slideshow um, and it will take me to um, that, that link. So you could do that if you wanted them to go to external um, tabs. But if you yeah. want them to stay in Canvas, I would make a button and link to that content. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention about these Google Slides, um, I think this is so helpful because if you embed this Google Slideshow, um, into your home page, you can modify your slideshow every week in Google and change like, you know, the, the pictures on it, the content, the links. And if you change it in Google, so let's say like I delete this. Um, if I refresh Canvas, you guys, it'll, it'll update it. So you see it's gone. So you don't have to go in and keep re-uploading your slideshow link and keep re it will update it in real time. Um, so if I go back and add that back on and refresh my page, it'll be back. So that was a really quick way to kind of modify what you're presenting on your homepage every week without having to go through and do a, a bunch of steps in Canvas um, as well as Google. So if you have yeah, like a so question. Yeah, of course. Um, sorry, I was taking notes. So no, you're fine. When they when this, so the slideshow is in there. If they click on that, does it take them to it or I just have to add a link? Um, to get to the slideshow itself, like in Google, correct. you would have to add a link. Um, it won't take them to it. Um, so okay. I would just put a bit.ly or something if you want to take them to a Google slideshow. Um, but if you just want them to access the links and the material, you, you wouldn't even need to do that. Um, but yeah, it won't let them type in it. It won't let them edit it or anything like that. Um, so if they're like interactive slides, you want to put a, a bit.ly or a link to take them to that slideshow. Thanks. Mm -hmm.
Any other any other questions about that? Or has anyone been using it successfully and um, modifying these things? I know in, in, go ahead, Shelly. Oh yeah, well, I was just out on leave for the last two weeks. And so for the asynchronous work, um, if I just changed the slide for the week, uh, it was really nice that it was just, in, since it was already embedded on my Canvas homepage, it just auto updated. So there's only one thing you had to do, one step real easy. Yeah, that would be so convenient, especially if, if you weren't there, um, you wouldn't have to spend like an hour changing your slideshow and then redoing all your links and all that. So, um, okay, perfect. Well, uh, I'm going to keep going, but if I need to come back, just let me know and I can circle around. All right. So, um, we're going to talk about adding people. Most of you probably already have students in here. Um, oh, I got a comment about Joanna. I've been able to link to other pages. Yeah, so she's kind of operating with a button-based home page where it just takes them to all of the things that they need to go to with a couple clicks. Um, so yeah, that's real easy for them to navigate without having to read through the navigation bar. Um, so adding people, um, this just kind of gives you the instructions of how to add people and then I'm gonna go into why this is important in a second. And I, I think Rebecca's in here again too. Um, so to add people, so students or co-teachers or, or any of those types of people, um, you're going to go to the left-hand navigation and push the people button. And then when you're on the screen, you're going to hit this plus people button on the right-hand side. This is going to pop up and then you're going to type in their district email account. So for students, you're going to get their student email accounts and type those in and then for of staff, excuse me guys, same thing. Um, so let's say I'm going to add um, Rebecca as a co-teacher in my course. And um, this is gonna be really important. I know she's in here, so I'll let her talk on this in a second too. Um, if you are out for any reason, um, it's gonna be really important to have um, your administrator, your program specialist, or your academic coach, or your colleague as a co-teacher so that they can seamlessly jump in and take over. Um, so I'm going to make sure her role is teacher. Um, I don't want to add her as a student because I want her to edit. Um, and then I'm just going to hit next. I'm going to find her in the district institution. I don't want her Kern County one. And then I'm just going to hit yeah, next and add user. Um, Rebecca, do you want to touch on that at all anymore? Did I cover it? Okay. Well, I don't know if she's actually in here yet, so no problem. Um, so I would today, I would just get it done. I would go and add, um, you know, your, um, your coordinator, or Rebecca, um, or whoever that is, your program specialist, um, your academic coach, just anybody that would be able to come in and take over. So if you guys got sick or something happened um, or you were quarantined or whatever, someone could easily um, help you and jump in and take over. Um, so I know that um, that was kind of what was Rebecca was hoping to see from everybody was to add those people in this week so that as classes close and things like that, um, people can jump in and help. I have a question, Tabitha. Go ahead. What, what about adding our paras and having them as editors and like running a show if we were to be quarantined or sick or something? Um, so if they have Canvas account, I think that's fine to add them. However, you still need to add those district like certificated employees because there has to be someone certificated kind of helping. Um, even if you were out. So I, I don't think adding the pairs is a bad idea at all. However, I would I would still say you need to add um, myself and Rebecca and Tess and, and your academic coach for Juliana specifically and then everybody else, your, your um, admin, um, just, just in that off chance that, that you're out or something happens. Tabitha, if we add them just, just to all of it, we don't have to add them to each course, correct? We're just adding to Canvas and then they can access You'd have everything. to add to each course. Each course, okay. Yeah, you. yeah, add to each course because they're not, when I add as a co-teacher, they don't have access to my whole Canvas account. They just have access to that one specific course. So if you have multiple courses, Michelle, I would add them to each one. 
Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Sorry, about Tabitha. Oh, okay. sorry. I just sent over the invite to you, Rebecca, and my program specialist. Uh, I didn't hear if you said if we're supposed to send it to our cohort as well, or do we just wait on that? Um, I think you're okay, Nicole. You can if you have like your your buddy or your teacher buddy or colleague that's kind of like been set because I know you guys have been set up to like help each other if something happened. You could add them. I don't think it's gonna hurt. Um, but now okay. that now that I'm in there, I could go and add them too. You know what I mean? Now that I'm a teacher in your course, if you were out, I could go uh, and add okay. Abigail, for example, or whoever. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. No problem. All right. Any other questions about adding people or who needs to be added or that kind of thing? All right, I hear nothing, so I'm moving on. Um, but on slide six, there's there's instructions if you need to go back and review those. All right, so I'm going to get into this discussion about modules versus pages, and then um, I had some really good questions in the first session, so I'm going to kind of go through what that question was and how we resolve that answer. Um, but I had this question sent to me last week, so I wanted to touch on it today. So modules and pages, um, they kind of work together, but they are separate things. So a page can include text, videos, links to files. So what we just did with that home page is exactly what you can do in a page. So pages can be linked to other pages. Pages can have assignments in them. Um, that's where kind of the meat of your content would live is in a, on a page. Modules are a way of organizing and displaying your content. So modules simply help control the flow of a course for a student. So it sets it up that it's very organized and what they see is set up by you. Um, so it's not just this um, open ended link of pages that they have to shuffle through. Modules are a way for you to set it up and control what they see and when they see it pages live within a module. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you to kind of hopefully make, help it make sense. Um, but pages live within modules. Modules are just simply a way to organize pages. So kind of like modules are the bookshelf and the pages are the books. Um, so let me go in and um, kind of show you guys what we talked about last time and what that all kind of means in terms of organizing your content. So on your modules, the question that I had was, I want people to, I want my students to be able to go in every day and complete all of my assignments on Monday. And how, how do I set that up? Because if I make the assignments in pages or assignments, it's not organized by day. My suggestion to that question was use a module, put all of your assignments for Monday under the Monday module. So this gray header is like my module and then assignments would go underneath it. So um, I'm gonna actually just delete this whole module and start from scratch for you guys. So right now I have no modules. I wanna make my Monday module and I want all of my assignments for Monday. So reading, writing and math, to be housed under that. So when they click Monday, it just takes them to those three things. So I'm going to hit plus, plus module, add module. Um, I'm going to call it Monday. And then you can set it to lock until a certain time, but I usually don't worry about that. All right. So I've got my Monday module. I've got like my bookshelf, so to speak, but I don't have anything in it. Um, so I want to add a assignment or a page. So I'm going to add an assignment. So I want my kids to read a story that I'm going to put in a slideshow and I want to know that they've opened that assignment and that they actually did something with it. And that's for this purpose, simply opening this assignment. If I make it a page, I'll never know if they looked at it or not. Um, Canvas isn't going to give you that detailed of information about what they've looked at. So I'm going to make it an assignment because I want them to have to click something saying they did it. Um, so I'm going to make it an assignment and then um, you can make it a new assignment. I'm just going to click this reading Monday that I've already made, but you could make a new assignment and, and name it as well. Excuse me, guys. All right. So there's my assignment. I'm going to click that to go edit it and add kind of the information I want. You can see I've kind of already done that step, but I'll show you guys. 
So um, I have Reading Monday. I have my instructions. I could kind of make this prettier if I wanted. Um, you know, change the color, increase the font, all of that kind of stuff if you want to make it nice. Um, and then this would be my, um, my Google slide of that unique story. So I could kind of download that and, and put it up here. And so now I've, I've got my instructions, I've got my story. I'm going to go through in this assignment and um, I'm going to put it in this assignments group. I'm just going to change the grade. I want it to just be complete or incomplete. I can also just put not graded. Um, depends, you know, I know I, I see you guys are probably grading some things. I'm not sure. Mod severe, you're probably not grading. Um, so it just kind of depends what, what the purpose of that assignment is for you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put not graded because I don't, for my mod severe class, theoretically, I don't need to grade that. I could assign this to certain students in my course, or I could assign it to everyone. Um, it just depends what that assignment is. So if you had um, individual goal work you wanted to assign to them, you could assign it to just, you know, Bobby would just get this, and then everybody else would get some something different. You can put a due date if you want. Um, I usually don't put that um, unless you want to. So you could say this is due Monday the 21st because that's the Monday assignment. And then I'm just going to hit save. So now there's my um, assignment. There's my slideshow. They could click through and read the story. Um, and then I would know that they, they have done that. So let's go to student view and look at that assignment really quickly. So if you ever want to see what it's going to look like for a kiddo um, on the home page, you can click student view. And then let's click Monday. Oh, see, my module thing is hidden. All right, so I'll go back and fix that. This part is a part, okay, it's unpublished. So now I know that was going to be a problem for my kids, so that's really helpful. All right, so there are a couple of errors that happened there. So my modules button was not, a, my kids could not see the modules button and my module wasn't published. So I'm gonna fix both of those things right now. So I'm gonna move my modules button up and then um, on this, I'm on navigation, you can hide all of those things. So you just drag them down to get them out of the way for your kids so that they only see, you know, a couple of things. So you could move all of those things down. And so you can see them, but they can't. And now I'm gonna to go to my modules button and I'm gonna publish my module by just clicking this button. I'm gonna publish. There we go. So now I got a green check mark, it's published. So now I'm gonna go back into student view again and let's see what happens. And you can see because I put a due date, it's it's um, coming up on their home page that that's due. So I'm going to go to that assignment, and I could also click Monday, and there's my assignment. Read the story, so I can click through, um, and now it'll tell me if they went on that assignment or not. Um, you could also change that to have a submission if you wanted to. So. I've, I think I've gone off track a little bit, so let me back up. So um, when I'm in my modules, I have my reading assignment. I could do a math and a writing the same way, and then I could just make another module for Tuesday and do the same thing. You can also duplicate these assignments if they're very similar from day to day. Um, you can duplicate them using this little three snowman button here and hitting duplicate. And then you can move these down and then just edit them. All right. Any questions about the modules versus the pages? All right. So um, there are different types of assignments. So um, there's five of them. So there's assignments. So that's, you know, any Canvas assignments, you can submit them through text entry. You, they could upload a file. They could do a media recording where they just quickly take a picture within Canvas and send it to you to, to, to prove they've got something done. They could do a Google Doc using the Google Assignments app. 
um, or different pages. There are discussion boards. So similar to what you'd see kind of in a college course, you could, you could do a discussion board. Um, you may or may not use that one. Um, you can do quizzes. And with a quiz, you can actually set pictures or symbol sticks icons as the answer keys. So they could go through and click the right answer using pictures if they needed to. Um, you could do a non-graded assignment, kind of what we just did. Um, and then we can use external tools. So we can link to boom cards. We can link to different things. Um, so those are the different types of assignments and kind of going over what they're used for. Any questions about those assignments or kind of what they're used for, how to use them? All right, I don't hear anything, so I'm going to keep going. Um, so this just kind of lays out how to create an assignment. We, we just did this um, in our modules. You can make an assignment out of pages. I just highly, highly recommend you work out of modules. It saves you time. It saves you an extra step of having to go through and assign pages to modules. Just work out of modules. It, it'll it'll save you a lot of time in the long run so what i mean by that is when i'm ready to make assignments for the day um, instead of going to the assignments tab and creating an assignment and then assigning it to a module i'm just going to save myself all of that trouble and i'm just going to work out of modules and i'm just going to create all of my assignments for monday um, in the module so you can see that I can go and edit it, but I don't have to go through the trouble of assigning it to that module. I've saved myself one step. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Okay. Makes so, sense. perfect. Um, what We're going to quickly talk about apps within Canvas. Um, I'm going to kind of show you how to use the redirect tool to um, upload boom cards within Canvas. And then um, I didn't get into enough detail last time, and I probably won't now. So I'm going to try to make a loom to kind of go into how to use it in detail with assignments. But I'm going to briefly show you. Um, so the App Center allows you and your students to access third-party teaching tools. So you could use Flipgrid, BrainPop, Google Assignments. Um, the redirect tool to access boom cards is what we're going to use right now. And then there is a there is a link at the bottom here with some detailed instructions on different apps. So I'm going to go back to Canvas and then I'm going to go to the App Center. And so I'm going to go to settings. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to go to settings. And then I'm going to go to the apps tab right here. And so there are all of these kind of pre-installed apps that you can access. Most of these you need to have a subscription for, so they're not like free. Um, but to get to boom cards, this is what I want to do. I'm going to type in redirect. So I'm going to just type in red. Um, and this little blue arrow is like your best friend. So you want to look for him. So I need this blue arrow to get my redirect tool. What I'm doing with this is I am adding a link to my boom website and it's going to load within my class so my kids don't have to leave canvas to play their boom cards um, or to access any of that stuff so they can log in via canvas and boom they don't ever have to leave um, so i'm going to hit add app and then i'm going to name this boom cards make sure you name it because um, if you don't it's going to be super confusing um, All right, so now I'm going to put the website um, for the Boom login. I usually try to put in boomlearning.com slash sign in slash student. So it takes them directly to the sign in page. Um, and then there's a button here that says force open a new tab. I'm not going to push that. I want to make sure it's unclicked because I want them to stay in Canvas. Um, and then I want it to show in my course navigation. So I want it to come up on the left hand side. So I'm going to hit add app. And then um, I'm gonna just refresh my page. Usually it takes that to show up. So you can, you can see it here. Um, my Boom Cards app is now on my left-hand navigation. And if I push that, 
you can see it takes me directly to that sign in and then it signs me in kind of because I'm already logged on to Google. Um, so they can access their, their decks. They can go in and actually play a deck. Um, they can play a whole deck and they would never have to leave Canvas. So it all function the way it's supposed to on Boom. And they can submit that. So uh, just can you, can you change that hyperlink to just the deck that you want them to do? Yeah, you could put a you could put a um, hyperplay link if you wanted. But to be honest, Shelly, if I was gonna do that, I would probably just use a button and I would put that button hyperlink to that deck. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. I would probably do that if I wanted them to go to a specific deck right away. Um, but you could hyper hyper play link this. It just, um, I think a button would be much faster for that purpose. But you can do it this way. You could do the redirect tool um, and have them go to a one deck. I have, a, I have a question about that tool. Yeah, go ahead. So if I wanted to do it, say for, oops, sorry, say for booms and then boom cards, and then I wanted to do it for another website like, um, I don't know, like Happy Numbers or Lexia or something like that, can I, do I have to use, can I name it differently or? You wouldn't, yeah, so let's say I want to do boom cards and let's say I want to do Starfall. Okay, I want both of those. I would need to go through that same process again, Lily, where I'm typing in that red, I'm looking for this arrow, and then I'm hitting add app, and then I'm gonna name this Starfall, and then um, I'm gonna go to starfall.com. And then I'm unchecking force open because I want them to stay, and I wanna show in my course navigation. So I've got my Starfall app, I'm gonna hit add app the same way I did with those Zoom cards, and then if I refresh it on the side, now you'll see it says Starfall. And if they click it, it's going to load Starfall in Canvas. So check your websites. Some websites work, some of them don't. It depends on what firewall the company has set up um, because it's kind of feeding through a weird IP address. I know I'm kind of jumping off gun here, but double check and make sure these work because like unique does not work. I've already tried it. Um, and then there was another one. I think Go Noodle. Go Noodle would not let me do it. Starfall was fine. Boom Cards was fine. So kind of check. It's kind of hit or miss on those websites. But you can see they can play Starfall um, within Canvas now, and they don't ever have to leave. And um, this will be the same um, if they're using an iPad? Yep. Yeah, it'll work. It'll function the same way. Okay. Okay. I have a question on, um, so like I have a Zoom link on the left hand side, so I click on that and it doesn't show my meetings that I have scheduled. What does it show? Um, it's just like blank, it says no data, but I just recently, remember I texted you about the license, so I made the meetings when I had the basic one, do I have to recreate a new meeting since I have the license one now? Um, I thought the accounts merged. It was so long ago. I'm trying to remember. But okay. if anybody knows, chime in. I'm pretty sure my accounts merged. Like my basic district really? account merged with my licensed one. I wonder why they're not showing up. Go to just check your Zoom website. Like on a, okay. just make sure they're still there. Um, and then okay. I would probably just operate off the Zoom website. That seems to be easier, to be honest, than trying to do it in Canvas. Okay. And Sounds then just good. use your buttons and link to your meetings would be okay. the quickest way to do that. Um, okay. Yeah, double check and make sure they're there. I'm not sure. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I'm just going to briefly go over um, these Google slides and then. Um, you can authorize Canvas to access your Google Drive and have access to your files. Um, and then there's some instructions here on how to do that. We're running out of time, so I'm not gonna jump into this right now. Um, but just know there are videos for how to use the Google Assignments app and it'll assign students their own copy of Google Docs. It'll function um, 
exactly like it does in Google Classroom where every student gets their own copy, they turn it back in, um, that kind of thing. So, so if you're familiar with Google Classroom, this will be very similar. So you can look to watch both of these videos. They're just a little long, so we don't have time, um, unfortunately, but it'll go through and um, show you how to make copies for each student using those tools. All right, so these two slides, I'm not even, I'm not even going to go over them, but they are here for reference. It just, these are from the district website, or not the district, the district slideshow that they presented in November, and it just goes over their definitions of what synchronous instruction is and is not, and what asynchronous instruction is and is not. So just make sure in your schedule, double check and make sure that your synchronous instruction matches what their, what the expectation is of what that is. Um, and then this last slide just has some different resources. There are some really good YouTube channels that have very, very detailed step-by-step -step instructions here. And then the Canvas website actually has a ton of stuff. It has pictures and step-by-step -step instructions, and it's really, really helpful. So I've linked that there as well. Um, so we only have a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions about Canvas or you know, utilizing it or distance learning or any of that stuff that I can maybe help with. I do. I do. I have a few questions. Go ahead. So um, some of my parents um, didn't have technology when they were joining at the beginning of the school year. Mm -hmm. So I, I gave them some of the Chromebooks that I had in my class and some iPads, but I didn't have very many of them. Okay. So a lot of them are using their own personal computer. So I noticed that they're having a hard time access a lot of stuff because they're not logged in with their student email. Um, so I guess my question is, that's an issue. I know it's probably not a question for you, but how would I go about requesting like more Chromebooks for my students? Or um, send Rebecca and I an email, Lily, and just kind of lay out, lay out who doesn't have one and who needs one, and then we can kind of address it on our end. Okay, and yeah. then along with that question, um, some of my students have iPads that I lent them that I had in my classroom. Uh -huh. So um, they're having a hard time, like the buttons aren't showing up, a lot of the images aren't showing up, it just kind of says like dot image or um, is there, do they have to update it or how do they fix that problem? Yeah, the, the app's probably out of date. Um, I will reach out to tech and ask them um, and then um, get back to you because I'm not, I'm not positive on what's happening with that or how they would go about updating them, but I can find out. I'm writing myself a post-it note. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, and one more thing. Sorry, Tabitha. You're good. What's um, up? Can I embed a video onto a page, not a module, a page? On Canvas? Yeah. yeah. I, I might have missed it. I'm That's okay. So, late, yeah, you can embed a video. So let's go to, um, let's go to this assignment. So let's say we have this, this reading assignment. I've got my slideshow. I want to put a video instead. So I'm going to delete um, this slideshow. And then if you want to put a YouTube video, you would go and grab that, um, embed code so you go to share and then you go to embed and I want to copy this code and then I would go back and then this insert edit media button Lily I would go to embed and I would paste that code so there's my YouTube video if you made your own video and you wanted to just insert it from your computer you could go to um, record upload media and then you could upload it from your computer. And then okay, you would just you. save it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, since no one has any more questions. <laughs> go for it. You can uh, kick me out if I'm asking too many. Never, go for it. So I'm trying to embed some videos from Loom, and it's asking, it's it's saying if I want to do responsive or fixed size. What does that mean? Do you know? On Loom, it's asking you that. Yeah. 
So what that means is if you do a fixed size, so um, you couldn't change the ratio on um, a web. So like if you upload it, if you say fixed and I make it like a 1080 by 700 or whatever, that size will never be able to change. Um, I would say you want to do responsive because you could shrink it down if you needed to to fit on something. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, that's all it means. Um, Celia's got, so Celia's got a question. When I add a boom card deck, do the kids need to be signed up to access it? Yes, 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 yes. They definitely need to. Um, you, you want to make sure they have their accounts and, and they know how to log into boom. Um, because if they're not signed in and you give them just like a hyper, like a fast play link, it won't give you any data. So it's almost like useless to even send it to them. That's the whole point. So make sure they've got their accounts and they know how to log in. Access the Starfall and um, ask your principal. Your principals have um, those access codes for you guys, is my understanding. Rebecca or Regan, are you guys in here? I see their pictures, but I don't know. If yes, I am. Hey, hey um, for Starfall, um, do they go through their principals for that? Yeah, there's certain schools that have uh, added Starfall. It's not district wide. Got it, got it. So she says, I have the login info, but I don't know how the kids can access it. It's a great question. Yeah, uh, I would check if she has it. It's probably at her school. Check with your academic coach. Okay. Got I know it. for our school, the librarian has sent us the username and login. And so I just made like a like a login sheet for like each student like this is how you log into clever canvas and then starfall so i'm hoping that they can log in that way because if not they just have like a like a trial version right yeah hopefully that works um do you mind sharing that nicole i'd love to see it and maybe we can share it out to everybody to help out oh yeah for sure i'll share it with you now awesome thank you um Joanna is saying there's individual access codes for each student. Joanna, did you get those from your principal academic coach or did you have to set those up? Um, I got them from my academic coach. So she asked me how many kids I had in my class and then sent me um, that, that amount of access codes. And so when I, um, then I, I sent that, like when I linked it or that when I did the link to Starfall from within my Canvas, um, mm -hmm. I just made a button for it but I did the, the link that took them directly to where they sign in. And I don't think they needed to create um, like an account with specific login information. I think they just had to put that access code in. Okay. Or, well, they may have had to create their own account. I actually can't remember, but I've, my students have been able to use it. Um, so I okay. maybe created their own account. I don't know if the district well I would say they could probably use their district emails for that if they had to. Yeah, I think yeah. probably. I think they had to create it, though. I don't think I could create it for them. That was the problem because mm. as soon as I logged in, then I, because it could only be logged in on one device or like oh, I one see. Yeah. So I couldn't create all of that. So I think they had to create it however they did, whatever, you know, login information that they chose to use. And then, but they needed the access code, which I provided to them. Got it. So Cecilia is saying, is that through the group, create group access code? Um, I'm not sure, Cecilia. Yeah, ask your academic coach because it seems like they're very familiar with, with how to use that. And I am definitely not. So um, I'll, I'll sh shift that question over to them. Um, I see, Julieta, can we have a boom learning data training? Um, yeah, I don't see why not, Julieta. Um, It'll definitely be after Christmas, but <laughs> um, yeah, I don't see why not. That shouldn't be an issue. Um, anybody else? I, I don't want to take up your planning day if I don't have to, but I want to answer any questions. So I'm here. If um, you guys don't have any other questions, you're, you're free to hop off. If you do, please feel free to stick around. I'll, I'll be here. Bye.